Hey guys, today on the bench we have the Ego Power Plus Blower. This is the 650 CFM model. And this one I received broken. They didn't know if the motor speed control was bad. Um, this one already had been gone into, so some of the stuff isn't put back together. The bottom plate's not on it. I didn't take it off. It came that way. But I had a couple screws here in it, and I saw the ones that, that came with it, and I backed them out. And here we go, our first look inside. And we do see some uh, some differences for sure uh, from the 480 CFM blower that we uh, repaired one and replaced the speed control on the other one. We actually have a new feature here. This appears to be that the battery has to be locked all the way in and verified with a switch here. The speed controller looks similar, but you can tell it's a little bit different. And the way the ribbon cable is is different, and it looks like the way that this newer blower has the, the, the really neat, convenient thumb knob here. You can tell this board here is different than the, the um, potentiometer on the front of the other models. We also notice here that we have the, um, the vibration dampening little rubber plugs on the side of this one, on the actual blower BLDC housing. If they'll stay, that's fine. We also see a metal strip here Just one side, and we see that we have a chromed or, or plated cross section here. So it does look a little bit different. The cone looks a tad bit different. Doesn't look distinctly different from the back side or intake side. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the BLDC motor. And we can test it out later if we need to. I'm just gonna take all this out and um, just take a little bit closer look because we also see an inductor in line now that I hadn't seen on a Ego tool before. So let's take a closer look at it. Some things are just kind of glued in place or silicone in place. And then we will have to take the two Phillips heads to take this board off and we'll be right back. And there we go, all of our electronics are out. So back now with just the electronics out and hooked back up, and I have a battery here at 57 volts. This switch does appear to work. I'm gonna put that on there just so we ain't gotta hold it down. So we're definitely getting through our switch. There we go, we're getting all the way to the board, so. No attempt to run it does anything. So they changed up the design where the um, capacitor is on board with you, with your trigger control. Then we've got a series of cables going to the speed control board, and that goes to the controller itself. So I unplug the battery and let the capacitor die down. I'm trying to just go around and peel off the silicone because you, you can't really see the function of this switch uh, completely. It's totally covered up with silicone. So I'm gonna to continue to work away at this silicone and uh, we'll be right back when we can see a little more here. So back now with the potting removed that did help uh, figure out more about the switch. Hopefully you can see that number. It's a JABIN, a JABIN DLK-156QR. And I could not find any information on this switch potentiometer combo at the time of this video. Whether it's just that new or it's just proprietary, I'm not sure. But we see that the uh, the red and the black just come in to be the bus across the cap for the controller itself. So that means the controller's already got its voltage. So this is working either off of this switch control board or off the controller itself feeding through. We see our main contacts come up to the yellow and the black here. So we just go to ohms. As soon as we push this plunger in, we start making, so that's fine. And then our red, blue, and our green look to be across the potentiometer. Even though, you know, 30K is kind of high. I mean, maybe it is a 30K on potentiometer. Since I couldn't find any information on it, I'm just gonna assume it is, because if I go to the middle pin, which is the wiper, it jumps really fast, but it's a large ohm scale, so. I'm pushing down real gently and it jumps up to over 1K. So 
So I believe it's actually okay. So moving on to this part, this is, I thought it was even hot glue, but I believe this is a clear epoxy resin. I can't get this off, so I can't find out much about it other than the trying to figure out this is an encoder or just a potentiometer. It seems just to be a potentiometer. Somewhere around 100K, it's like reading over 90K. If I go to the middle pin, the wiper, it varies fine, so I don't I don't think anything's wrong with this potentiometer. This board, I really can't troubleshoot. Give you a little bit closer look at this. But uh, it's, it's potted extremely well. I'm really not 100% sure what kind of uh, signal we're looking for back to the controller. Whether this is just a signal conditioner or it changes it into some kind of PWM signal, I am not sure at this point. I just know that the, the older blower just simply used a potentiometer, so. And of course we have our, um, usually your turbo is just kind of jumping across and putting the full voltage out. We're just going to black. These two blacks are connected together. So it's just taking that to the green. So that part is kind of similar to the old blower. So back now I got this plug back up to do a little bit of voltage check since I know that this one works across the black and the red coming from the control board. I got my 57 volts. So just checking from my common across here, like yellow, 4.5, the green. So we see that that does change. So whatever that reference from the black to the green, so we go to negative or common on the green and yellow positive. We're getting a voltage reference change. So I think we are getting a signal to the controller. Unfortunately, at this point, we're going to have to tear into the controller. I'm going to unplug everything and start digging around. We'll be right back. There we go. Going this, beside this heat sink. So in the, um, the previous 14-inch chainsaw repair, and I also repaired one blower. I did some troubleshooting on a blower on a video. Ended up repairing a 480 CFM blower. And... Um, didn't really do a video on it because it was so similar to the chainsaw. I'm going to be a, a little while digging around all this potting. Just have to be gentle here and careful and take off a few chunks at a time. And of course then we can remove our heat sink. And that usually exposes our little flat pack MOSFETs. We'll see if this board is the same. It looks fairly similar so far. We can start to see the fuse here. I was wondering if the fuse would be blowed since I was getting my voltage to the cap, but upon further investigation, they actually are soldered together here, so the fuse does not stop it from going to the cap. So if you can see here, we're on ohms. And like a lot of these controllers, this fuse is blown. Typically, that means the MOSFETs are also blown on the board. I've just made a uh, um, clean slice down beside the heat sink so I can try to get under it like that. I don't think I've ever seen this much potting on a control board. I don't know if this is common with the new one, so they just overdone this one in particular, but usually the, um, the heat sink is not that hard to get off the MOSFETs. And yeah, we even see that the silicones even come in, even got mixed in with the thermal pad a little bit. I really expect that this to be populated more than just two MOSFETs. So we have uh, three over here and three over here. So we have two MOSFETs per rail or per phase. We have two of the little flat pack MOSFETs like this one. Let's see if I can read this number. See if it's similar to the others. Yeah, TPH4R008NH. So back now with a lot of the mess cleaned up from all the potting, get you a little bit closer here on the workbench. Hopefully you can see my meter okay. If I go from my negative power to my positive, we're open because the fuse is open. 
but if we go across where the fuse would come out, we see we have a dead short across the positive and the negative. That's what took the fuse out, of course. And as we go through on these MOSFETs, I know that the corner of one of these is the gate, and then the pads on all four, and then the other three pads on the, on the bottom side is gonna be your source and your drain. So without even looking at the data sheet, which I'll, I'll try to have a data sheet up here of this one, or one similar to this one, as a reference. But I've worked on these before. If you stay in the center pins, you'll be able to see like 100K is fine. 100K. So that's on one side of the, the brown and the blue phase. The other side of the brown phase here. 100K. 100K. So those those don't look short of the cross on, on either one of the brown or the blue phase. Then the yellow phase, a little bit harder to get to here. And there we go. There's our dead short. Yep. So it's on the yellow, the yellow phase. Just going to bring over the hot air here. Set it about 320C. Go ahead and remove one of these MOSFETs. We're going to put a little bit of flux on here. So what's a good bit of thermal pad on the back side of these? You can see on the ones that's open. Sometimes I have to take these off this way. That bottom pad is starting to let go now. And we are still shorted, so I got to take this one off as well. Clean the board up really good with some isopropyl alcohol. So now after it's cleaned back up and those two shorter ones are removed, we're up in the high case. So we'll cross our positive here to our negative way up in the mega ohm so that's a good sign so back now with my BODC controller the same one that I repaired a couple ego things with by putting a 63 volt cap instead of the 50 volt cap just to make sure but in this case this is a factory one with the 50 volt cap I'm running it with a 30 volt supply Limited to five amps for safety here. I'm just gonna see if the BLDC is actually okay. Oh yeah, I'm liking that. Got to a couple amps on it. I think the BLDC is in good shape. So that's the main thing, because I can run it like this if I really want to. But I'll go ahead and get some MOSFETs on the way. We'll see if we can repair the controller. I'm going to use these MOSFETs here that I've used in a previous Ego repair. I'm just going to clean the pads up good with my regular soldering iron before I get the hot air out. I 
I'm okay with a little bit of solder being on there, just not much. I am going to get my soldering iron and uh, make sure the pads are all hit. And I got one resistor that is straightened up that I blew off with the hot air, it looks like. Clean it up now. So back now after putting the new MOSFETs on and it checks where it's not shorted. Got a 30 amp fuse across temporarily as a safety. Do a test here. And when I go to start it, it pops the motor really hard. So it's still something going on with the controller. It's not blowing the fuse. It's faulting the controller out. I'm not saying I won't ever go back to this controller, but I think at this point, I want to just um, modify my cheap BODC controller and see if I can run the blower. Because I am a little bit afraid if I keep on, I'm going to damage the BODC and I definitely don't want to do that. So from this point on, I want to make it a, uh, a modification video. So with about 20 minutes on this video, I think I'm gonna stop it here. And if you would like to see the retrofit of the cheap BODC controller on this 650 CFM blower as well, then please comment below and I'll try to have a part two to this video. So please don't forget to comment. And if you found this troubleshooting video helpful today and you like the look inside of this Ego blower, please like, share, subscribe, and thanks for watching.